Hello there, yes you are indeed watching Lock Picking Legend. And I, I sort of want to do a deep dive on these uh, Yale leashy style picks because a lot of people absolutely love them myself included you know they fly through locks fly through security pins you can use them on locks that match the markings i'll make a video next week showing you how, how to use them to pick locks where they don't match the markings and they're just fantastic but what i've noticed is the people that really like them are the people who've spent a lot of time picking vehicle locks with leashy picks no understandable it's just a a transference of skills now although i want this to be simple it it's strangely complicated from the outset because this yale 210 is actually a six pin core but for some reason yale only put five pins in it you know, it's a six pin Bible, six pin core, but it's only been pinned up for a five pin. Now, this is a six pin uh, pick, but you can also pick five pin locks of it. Usually what you would do is not put it all the way in, match up the pins with the markings, but start with pin two on the pick as pin one in the lock. And then, and then pin three on the pick as pin two, pin four as three, five as four, and six as five. And you'd leave a few mil, you, you wouldn't put the pick all the way in the lock. But I'll, dem I'll demonstrate all that uh, next in the next video. I wanna keep this kind of simple because I want people to get the most out of these picks because they are fantastic. So, anything else I need to tell you before we start? Oh yeah, this lock has got one standard pin, and four spool pins. And I'll tell you something interesting. You'll rarely get a lock with all spool pins. Because if you add all spool pins, you're going to have trouble getting the key in there. Having at least one standard pin keeps the core central. You got to see what I'm saying? If you've got all spool pins, that, that could turn slightly. So a standard pin is almost there just so that the keyway is kept... Uh, you know, central. So let's dive in. Legendary. So I suppose first of all, we should have a look at the pick. Let's just budge that out of the way. So very simple, same as the Leashy Auto picks really. You've got the, move the tension arm out of the way. There's all your markings. There's the picking handle. You match that little tail up to the markings. There's one, there's two. There's three, there's four, and that moves the pick there. Now this is actually the rim cylinder version for pins that are above the keyway. And that makes sense because of the position of the markings, obviously. If they were below the keyway, those markings would be upside down and on the other side of the pick. So that's the pick. Um, let's have a look at this lock. Nice lock, Yale 210. You know, good tolerances, well-made lock. You can see the standard pin there. But weird why they've got a, a six-pin core and Bible in there, but they only pin it with five. I, I'm sure they're saving money somewhere. Now, first thing, make sure it goes in nicely. If you've got any chunky, clunky, don't pick it. You might have a dodgy pin or something and it'll break your pick. So here we go really. First thing, no tension. Just making sure that our pins are matching up with our markings. Next week I'll show you how to pick a lock where they don't match up. But this week, there you go. Oh, there's nothing on six. There's absolutely nothing in there. Very bizarre. But they all matched up. So let's get picking. Make sure it's in there fully apply a bit of clockwise tension and uh well let's yeah there's a bit of that's that's better isn't it you can see it 
Okay, so now one, that's already set. So that is a nine cut. So I did say this was going to be a deep dive, but I'll just make it a bit clearer. So you see that the pin in this little diagram, the key pin that I've put a nine on. That's a nine cut pin. That'll be the deepest cut on the key. But because the leashy pick has got the blade as well as the pick that goes into the keyway, you know, if you're a single pin picking, you'll just put a pick in. But this has got a blade, so it lifts the key pins up slightly, and it will lift it will lift the deepest pin in this lock anyway up to the shear line, so it doesn't need picking. And you'll learn how to identify that just through practice. So I hope that diagram made that a bit clearer. That's what it's telling me. That I've just reset it there. You see me move the tension arm. There's no point trying. You'll get used to feeling that. That's already set. So there's no no point trying to do anything else on that. You know, it's a set pin. So I just reset that again and try again. That, that's not binding and it's not doing anything. Two's not binding. Three's not binding. Four is binding. What is binding? Offering resistance. Now look at the counter rotation. See. I'll leave a link to my counter rotation video in the um, description of this video. Go and watch that if you don't understand counter rotation. Now five, nothing on five. Let's. We know one's still good. Nothing on two. Three is binding. It's offering resistance. So there's the counter rotation. You can see that. You can see the tension arm. Be patient, be gentle, dare I say. And there's your tiny little click there. Doesn't matter if you don't know if you've got it, Just you can just keep moving through them. Still not really anything on two, let's try five. And five is bound up. So there's the counter rotation. Come on, there's my little click. Oh, now I think that popped from an overset position into a normal position, which is what you're going to get with spool bins. <laughs> So here's a diagram to make this a bit clearer. An overset pin is when you've raised the key pin too far and the key pin crosses the shear line. So the key pin is binding instead of the driver pin. And this happens quite a lot with these leashy uh, type picks. For, for, well, they certainly do with me and a couple of my mates who use them. So to deal with that, you just have to, you know, it's a it's minuscule relaxation of tension and that's where you get that little bounce back that I pointed out there because the, uh, the key pin falls back down and the, uh, the driver pin set. You can see that in the diagram and I'll show you it again with the leashy in a bit. Back to two, which was binding. And you heard the little click there, and there you go. And I, you know, did you see the patience? Did you see how delicate I was picking that? You know, don't be forceful. Don't ever force anything with these picks. Right, let's have another go. And everything I just showed you, try and remember it. So look, there's nothing happening there. That doesn't feel like a bound pin. That feels like a set pin. I've got set bounce on one. Nothing on two. Nothing on three, we know it's going to be four. There's counter rotation, I'll release a bit of tension. Release a bit more tension. You heard the little click there. And there you go, did you see that? That's it jumping out of an overset position. 
3 is binding. Counter rotation. Patience. Delicate. You heard that little click there. And there you see it. You saw it. You literally saw it jump out. That's where the driver pin and the spring are helping us out. Fives offering resistance. Patience. Let the tension off a bit. There's my little click. And there you go. It pretty much helped us out. Back to two. And there you go. And it really is that easy. One standard pin, four spool pins. It's an incredible bit of kit. Lessons from this video. Don't rush anything. Feel for set bounce. Learn to identify a binding pin because it's offering more resistance than all the others. And pick gently. Once you've discovered your binding pin, very gently, once you get the counter rotation, if there's a spool pin, there might not be, but once there's counter rotation, gently ease off your tension a little bit. You might pick it straight away, you might get that little click, and then it might jump out and you're done. But, you know, it's almost impossible to fail as long as you just keep going back through them. If it doesn't open, go back to pin one and try again. One, two, three, where's my binder? This one, the one offering resistance. And then pick that and then keep going. And at some point that lock's gonna open. I doubt that these picks will, the only time these picks won't open a lock is if there's a broken pin or there's a damaged spring or something. <laughs> or, or it doesn't fit the lock. <laughs> you can't just hit the lock with it. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you got something out of that. And then I'll know to make a video next week showing you how to pick a lock where the markings don't match up. Yeah, you're not laughing now, are you? Well, there you go, people. Um, they are fantastic picks. If you've got any questions for me, if there's anything you're stuck on that I didn't explain well enough, or any other questions about these picks, put the questions in the comments. Tell us whether you enjoyed this video. Are there any other techniques or tools you'd like me to talk about? And if you're not subscribed, maybe consider that. More subscriptions, more videos. And a special hello to all the new subscribers. We've had quite the tsunami of noobs come along recently, which is always lovely. Have a good week, people. I'll see you next week, late as usual. Don't forget the thumbs up. Ta-ta. Way down deep in the middle of the Congo A hippo took an every caught a rubber and a mango He stuck it with the others and he danced a bitty tango The rhino said, I know, we'll call it Umbango!